ಬಹಳ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ you have any presentation yes sir ha ah, present it yeah put it up yes is it showing sir board rooms not moving ah yes. ಹಾಂ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಯಾ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎಬ್ರಿಮನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ ನಾ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಫೇಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಎಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಯುವರ್ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸಮೀರ್ ಓಕೆ ಹಾಂ ಹಲೋ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಹಾಂ ಹಾಂ ಬೆಟರ್ good evening everyone uh, we will be doing the ward rounds uh, now all these three cases were uh, they had a very similar presentation but the end results were very uh, different coming to the case 1 a uh, 63 year old male came with complaints of right upper abdominal pain since one day the pain was sudden in onset uh, onset persistent in nature more in the right uh, hypochondrium and epigastrium and was not relieving with medication he was a known case of uh, hypertension and diabetes mellitus since many years and uh, he had a surgical history of subtotal cholecystectomy which was done in 2019 uh, post operatively the patient was followed up in the same hospital in which ct abdomen showed multiple calculi in the gb stump examination wise per abdomen it was soft uh, there was tenderness on palpation in the right hypochondrium and localized guarding was noted in the right hypochondrium bowel sounds were heard uh, patient was walked up uh, the hemoglobin was 12.3 total counts were uh, 8000 and uh, creatinine was elevated to 3.65 uh, total bilirubin was also elevated 1.39 and the direct was 0.86 rest of the liver function tests were within normal limits the uh, mlas and lipase were uh, uh, deranged Uh, so with uh, ultrasound uh, abdomen and pelvis was done which showed a residual uh, gall bladder with few calculi largest measuring 9 mm the cbd was normal ah uh, so, we know let's start with you we know what is your provisional diagnosis what are the likely post scenario hello Hello? Hello, Hello. Hello, Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, what are the, like, what is the likely possibility? Possibilities? Hello, sir. Sorry, sir. Just the joint, sir. I didn't hear. Sorry. Hello? Uh, see, the patient presented with the right upper quadrant pain, yes, radiating to the back with the episodes of vomiting. patient previously has had a subtotal cholecystectomy following yes, subtotal cholecystectomy the ct scan showed multiple gallstones in the stump yes, now he complains of the pain ultrasound again shows uh, residual gall bladder with multiple calculi and uh, some uh, amylase and lipase being elevated so what yes, are the likely possibilities sir uh, stump uh, stump polycystitis with uh, pancreatitis secondary okay. to uh, stones are uh, 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 the new stones which are formed in the cbd and the, that have been lead, leading to pancreatitis and primary pancreatitis these three are this okay uh, what about uh, this one the bilirubin is marginally elevated gall bladder stones in the uh, in the residual gall bladder the um, possibility of definitely stump cholecystitis but merits is syndrome would you consider that yes sir i'll consider sir but uh, here marginally elevated generally obstructive jaundice it will be so high in merits is syndrome you, you don't need to have very 
high call blood is one uh, bilirubin for that. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, how will you approach this page? Purushanta Prasad, questions before we move to the investigations? Uh, may I know who is the presenter? Presenter is Samir. Uh, he is a first year PG, but uh, okay, okay. we know this is a final year PG, so we thought we'll ask. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we know the, you know about the case, no? Details of the case, you know. Yes, yes sir, yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, before uh, you got an imaging done with that history and clinical examination findings. Yes, sir. Before uh, we thought of investigating, what was your impression in this person? Yes, sir, it is uh, you... ac 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 acute calculus, uh, calculus or cholecystitis, sir, and maybe pancreatitis because uh, there is an. Uh, a reference um, referral pain to back okay so only you can keep a possibility of pancreatitis yes, okay sir, yes sir. and yes. history it was given that it was a subtotal cholecystectomy means there is an yes, evidence uh, on paper yes sir okay okay fine uh, then uh, with uh, raised amylase and lipase you thought of pancreatitis am i right yes sir, yes, sir. like after clinical examination you will get the blood investigation yes, which sir. showed lipase and uh, okay what made you to get the lipase done? That's what, sir. The pain in the epigastric region, which is going ref uh, referral pain. Radiating, pain to, yes, radiating to back. Okay. What is lacking in sonography finding? Um, the bulkiness, uh, about the pancreatic bulkiness and CBD dilatation, sir. They are not mentioned at all about the pancreas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, you think it is uh, it is uh, like uh, it can happen with a radiologist or uh, intentionally they are not written here in this case. What may be the reason why they are not commented on pancreas? So generally, uh, most commonly they won't. Uh, uh, the chances of commenting and on it will be less because uh, if the bowel gas is uh, uh, coming in between the pancreas, uh, there is a less chance of show, seeing the pancreas. Okay. Uh, in the Mirji's uh, syndrome, if you are thinking in terms of is it more common when whole of the gallbladder is existing or when the part of the gallbladder is existing with the patient? When it is more common or when you suspect? Whole of the gallbladder, sir. Why? Why not in a, in a left behind the infant development? Sir, because uh, if there is a cystic uh, stone in the cystic duct which is uh, compressing, this might go into full dilatation and it goes to, uh, towards the CBD. Uh, okay, it is not a cystic duct. Yeah, it is a uh, infundibulum. Actually, yeah, it is heart monks infundibulum, which is compressing on that on that hepatic duct. Yes, sir. Uh, it is not a cystic duct business which causes mergers. Oh, yes, sir. It is proximal to that. Proximal yes, to that. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead with the uh, provisional thinking of uh, time. We know, we know Hello, sir. Your answer is wrong because. If the whole of the gallbladder is there, the stone has the ability to move around. If only the partial gallbladder is there, it can it can compress on the CBD. The stone can get impacted in the uh, infundibulum or the Hartmann's pouch, and that can cause merit disease. So much much more likely that uh, uh, you know in a partial gallbladder than on the full gallbladder. Okay. Is uh, Sani is Nir Niranjan there? Yes, sir, sir is also here. Ah, Niranjan, any questions so far? Hello? Niranjan? Shrikant, Shrikant there or not? Sir, hello? No, sir, Shrikant sir is not there. Ah, hello. Niranjan, any, any questions so far? No, 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 sir. I don't know. Yet. Okay. Um, continue. Uh, Samir, continue the, this one. Presentation. Yes. So after this, uh, the MRCP was done, which showed uh, the same uh, GB residual stump with. No, no, Samir, one, one, one second. What was your provisional diagnosis at the end of that? Sir, uh, stump, stump cholecystitis and uh, pancreatitis. Sir. Where is the evidence for stump cholecystitis? You said ultrasound is normal, only 12 stones are there. You didn't mention anything about uh, stump cholecystitis there in ultrasound. 
Sir, calculi was there. Go, so... go back, go back to the previous slide. Just because calculi is there, you can't call it a sum collision status. No, it can be uh, some residual stones. Your yes. TLC is normal. Your ultrasound uh, says residual GB with few calculi. CVD is normal. How can you say sum collision status? Vinod? Yes, sir. I am arguing, how can you say some collision status? It is just residual gallstones and uh, your, uh, there, there is no evidence of TLC is normal, your, there is no evidence of uh, uh, wall thickening of anything or anything in the song. How can you call it as some collision status? The it can be just, because the patient I, clinically, the tenderness is present in the right upper quadrant. So chances of collision status. Can be due to pancreatitis, no. Sorry, Rather sir? than collision status. It can be due to pancreatitis, tenderness. The one of the stones might have slipped out and produce pancreatitis. That is a cause for pain. Yes, sir. Pancreatitis accepted, sir. But more uh, tenderness in the right upper quadrant, I hope uh, it is because no, of no. the... No, should have some evidence to call it as polycystitis, no? Yes, sir. sir yes, sir. Pavishan, sir. Uh, there isn't, but uh, his pain was in initially started in the right upper quadrant. Quite severe, and then uh, mine is one. So that is not when it's common with CBD stone before it passed off, their pain might be severe, and that probably yes, would have I, found I, the that, is. Uh, that is definitely a possibility. It's a CBD, CBD stone that causing pancreatitis and that causing the pain is definitely a possibility. But uh, because there is residual stone, uh, you, you you can't definitely make the diagnosis of stump cholesterol study straight away, but you have to consider the possibility. Yeah, differential diagnosis is okay. Yeah. Okay. Ca carry on. We know. We know. Yes, sir. Yeah. See, you have reports with you in front of you before you yes, go sir. to further investigation. Yes. What we expect here, giving yes, importance to his history and a raised lipase levels. Okay, so it is better if we can put the diagnosis as probably it is a biliary pancreatitis first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, he yes, may sir. be having the associated stump polycystitis fine. Yes, sir. But you should give the diagnosis of biliary pancreatitis first, possibility of biliary pancreatitis. Yes, sir. Yes, why, sir. Why biliary Why first pancreatitis? Because typical of pain and raised yes, amylase. What is the clinical trial of uh, uh, pancreatitis? Clinical trial. Out of three, you should have two at least. So, what is the two diagnosis of clinic? Pain in the epigastric region, which is referring to back and uh, vomiting. Huh. Vomiting cannot, cannot. Vomiting may be because of uh, various reasons. So, it may not be a very important. <laughs> so, typical pancreatic pain, raised amylase three times the normal, and yes, then a typical imaging findings. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Imaging is simple, USC abdomen, what do you mean? Okay, that okay. may be there, may not be. Out of three, at least you should have two. So you okay. have two here, two have. Yes. So yes. it is a acute pancreatitis, probably biliary pancreatitis. Is he alcoholic? Yes, Patient is alcoholic? No, sir. Okay, so since uh, you gave a history of uh, partial cholecystectomy, biliary pancreatitis is the likely diagnosis. Okay? Yes, sir. Fine, fine. Ah, so Samir. Yes, sir. Further, MRCP was done, which showed the uh, residual stump calculi with sludge in lumen and uh, dilated CBD with uh, hypointense contents. And main pancreatic duct was dilated with features suggesting of uh, chronic pancreatitis. So, uh, further, um, Dr. Punachandrasa's reference was sought, and patient was planned uh, initially for US and uh, ERCP. But on US, uh, residual GB with stone and sludge was seen and biliary tree as such was normal and there was features of acute and chronic pancreatitis. Okay. Yes, sir. Should I carry on? Right. Now, Nikita, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, how would you approach this patient now? Patient, you know, you asked for the gastroenterologist because the MRCP showed possibility of small stones or sludge in the CBD, dilated CBD. Patient has come with pancreatitis. Patient has had previous history of 
partial cholecystectomy. So, possibility that the pancreatitis was related to this stone. So, how will you approach this patient now? And uh, Dr. Purnachandra initially thought he will do an endoscopic ultrasound and then consider possibility of ERCP if necessary. So, why didn't he do an ERCP straight away given the fact that there was already dilated CBD with possibility of sludge and you know maybe small stones? Sir, a uh, patient is having active pancreatitis, sir. Mm. So, uh, if the ERCP is done and if he uh, irritate the pancreatic duct more, I mean, if he, uh, so he, he might go into severe pancreatitis. So, it's better to avoid if there is no uh, uh, pressing need for the ERCP, sir. Is and that uh, the, ideally, yes. Huh, is that the only reason? Uh, that uh, is did a anyone, Did you any, yes. anyone of you go and see the see, MRCP? Imaging, sir. Uh, oh, I didn't get the answer. Did you see the MRCP? Anyone of you? No, sir. Imaging I, we did not see, sir. I, I always you know ask you guys whenever you request for any investigation, especially CT or MRCP uh, or any of these investigations, it is good for you to go and tell the clinical history to the radiologist and go through the pictures with them. They will teach you what are the things to look for and what have they found. And it is both for your knowledge and for you know for your learning and for you to plan your future treatment. I went and saw the MRCP. I was not very convinced that there is sludge or stones in the CBD. However, with the previous history of gall, you know, gallstones and you know, present uh, gallstones in the residual gallbladder and dilated the CBD, um, it was imperative that and and uh, presence of acute pancreatitis. It was imperative we studied the biliary tree properly. In a patient who is 83 years of age with uh, ischemic heart disease, diabetes, and hypertension, the, any procedure is high risk. So, if you are going to do an ERCP in somebody of his age, and uh, he, it's one, you need to be absolutely certain that ERCP is required. So, hence, Dr. Purnachandra went ahead and did an endoscopic ultrasound, which showed that the bile duct and the, bile, the biliary tree was clear. And hence, he did not proceed with the uh, ERCP. Yes. Now, so, now, uh, Ainas, what are the what are the complications of ERCP? Uh, uh, like uh, we can uh, have sir, like a uh, post. Do you know or you don't know? Uh, so, like uh, I. There are like contraindications to uh, patients undergoing CAT CP, no, sir. No, like uh, not con not not contraindication. I asked for complications. So, I mean, so like there can be the bleeding. Uh, uh, pancreatitis is pancreatitis. also one of the Yes, bleeding, pancreatitis, and the other one perforation. Perforation. Yeah, these are the three complications. All of them can be deadly, and many times it, it is an recognized especially perforation takes a few days for the patient to become ill if there is perforation so i think these are all quite deadly complications and uh, strangely most uh, ercp pancreatitis especially for biliary disease can be quite you know serious so that is why you have to be careful when you do the ercp hence ercp was not done so now, uh, now the patient you have the patient with you. Now let me ask Nitya. Yes, sir. The patient, the patient is there in the ward. His symptoms are not completely settling. Now, uh, what, how will you proceed with this patient? Sir, uh, better to do a diagnostic laparoscopy, sir, to look for features of. Uh... Cholecyst, the residual uh, stump cholecystitis. And if at all there is a uh, active stump cholecystitis, it's better to do the completion uh, cholecystectomy and come out, sir. 
but the patient has pancreatitis, no? Uh, it's better to do first diaglap, sir. Like not. Uh, 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 Why not just leave him alone? Why not just leave him alone? If his symptoms are not uh, subsiding with uh, uh, NPO and uh, the su uh, supportive measures that we give, then it's better to do a lab coding, sir. Tanya? So first, uh, treating for his pancreatitis, hmm. uh, like at least for the first uh, 24 to 48 hours with uh, all the NPO and uh, all the other uh, supportive measures for pa pancreatitis, conservative management of pancreatitis. If the patient mm. is not settling with that, if his pain is not subsiding, then mm. we go ahead and uh, do the residual cholecystectomy, sir. Because if we leave him alone, the recurrent pancreatitis, uh, there, is a, there is a chance that another stone can slip and cause another episode of pancreatitis, which will be severe for him. Okay. Um, sir, Gurushanta Prasad Nidanjan, questions now. Yeah, I, I forgot the name of the first girl uh, who answered uh, diagnostic lab. May I know your name? Nitya. Nitya. Uh, sir, Nitya. Nitya. Nitya, okay. See, we are talking about a case where we know the disease inside. And it's a biliary disease. You got the yes, point? Sir. And it's yes, a sir. benign yes. disease. It's a benign disease. We are talking about a benign disease, okay? Yes, so, uh, using the word diagnostic lab, see, we use the word diagnostic where we are uncertain of the diagnosis and we are yes. going to a minimum to do a minimum possible and uh, decide about the findings inside. Definitely okay, surgery. Sir. That is what is diagnostic lab. So, here yes, by putting a scope inside, what is that you are going to witness and take a call on doing a definitive procedure in a case like this? What are those diagnostic laparoscopic findings which will guide us to take a definitive call? Can you mention any findings? You cannot. You cannot. Yeah. So don't use yes. the word of, I will do diagnostic lab and then take a call of doing definitive. No, not this case. Not this yes. case. Okay. So don't yes. use the word. Yes. Your yes. plan should be like uh, the second uh, lady answered. Yes. Since it is acute pancreatitis, Probably it is a biliary pancreatitis in a high risk group. So, like any other biliary pancreatitis, manage 24 48 hours. And a few of you said that doing ERCP in a biliary pancreatitis is an absolute contraindication, which is wrong. See, stone itself is the cause for biliary pancreatitis. Right. Which stone yeah. impacted stone at the yeah. ampulla? Ampulla, yeah. So, use this word. Impacted stone at the ampulla is the cause for biliary pancreatitis. If that has been proved by MRCP or by EOS that there is a stone impacted at the ampulla causing common pathway obstruction, that is biliary and pancreatic. Especially, I thought probably that will is the report in this case because PD is dilated, CPD is marginally dilated with no demonstrable cause. Probably there is an impact with the raised amylase and lipase. So probably there is an impacted stone at the ampulla, which can be even seen in the lateral wing duodenoscope before we do ERCP. So the indication for endoscopic intervention in a case of biliary pancreatitis is impacted stone at the ampulla. We do a simple sphincterotomy, extract the stone, come out, put a stent and come out, not doing much. So that you can plan your definitive surgery for a biliary disease in the gallbladder. So this should be the answer. Please remember, I have made it very clear with simple English. Yes, sir. So, the Niranjan, your thoughts? Sir, same thing, sir. If uh, pancreatitis is not very severe or uh, there is no evidence of any necrosis, if the pancreatitis settles in 48 to 72 hours, we can go ahead with surgery. And if there is any stone uh, in the CBD, which can be diagnosed either with MRCP or uh, US or combination of both, then uh, ERCP is a must before surgery. Yeah, yeah, correct. So yeah. the so I think the student should be very clear. And so also that the, like there is no role for not doing surgery here because the biliary yeah. pancreatitis can recur. Like correct. if you send the patient home, they will come back with a severe uh, pan attack of pancreatitis again. Yeah. So the, I think students be very clear as Gurushantapar, Niranjan, and myself have said. The definite role for ERCP in patients with biliary pancreatitis 
if you want to take refuge, you know, MRCP is obviously the first investigation we do after the ultrasound scan showing presence of pancreatitis, lamellase and lipase being high, probably altered LFT. So you do an ERC, MRCP, get the roadmap. Then if many times it will suggest that there is a stone impacted in the ampulla, then go ahead directly with the uh, ERCP. In, in this case, there was, you know, just a bit of sludge possibility, sludge jaw, uh, small stones, that is what they reported. And uh, that is why, the, because of the high risk, the, Dr. Purnasindra went with the NUS, and that did not show any biliary, uh, you know, sludge jaw stones. So hence, we did not intervene in this situation. The patient settled on ultrasound scan, there was no evidence of any fluid collections or severe pancreatitis. The patient's only symptom at this stage was pain in the right upper quadrant, which was not settling. And hence, and uh, for the other reasons that we have all enlisted, we went ahead with the laparoscopic cholecy cholecystectomy. Okay. Um, Ravi Shankar. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, to, to Nitya. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. What what is, what is that common channel theory? Sir. What is the channel theory? The common channel theory for acute biliary pancreatitis. I'm not sure, sir. Anyone Sanya? else in the group? Other physics? Sanya or anybody else? Few of our PGs have joined. Uh, I had sent this link to our uh, ah. PGs. Anyone, anyone else? Uh, other anyone? Whoever is attending post graduates? Okay. See, uh, what is? Sir, yeah, Ravi Shankar. Ye na hila 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 See the common channel theory is proposed for two for two things. One is the see the the biliary uh, the terminal CBD and pancreatic duct as a common channel for a maybe distance of about 2.5 millimeters or so before the you know before the ampulla opens out so the the stone impacted in the terminal cbd will cause uh, you know high pressure in the pancreatic duct which is the possible uh, theory that is uh, implicated in the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis because of the high pressure in the pancreatic duct due to impacted stone in the common bile duct. And because there is a common channel, the pressure is transferred onto the pancreatic duct. So that is one theory. The other theory that is used for the common channel is the, uh, the uh, so presence of colidocal cyst in, uh, you know, in, the, in a pediatric neonatal and pediatric age group even sometimes in the later teens also. So the common channel theory is implicated again in the, uh, the uh, this one, the pancreatic juice causing dilatation of the biliary tree and that causing the colloidal cyst formation. So that is one of the things. So, Purushanta Prasad, you can add. Uh, again, uh, one more logical question. Ultimately, what is the cause for pancreatitis? What what is that? How the it gets damaged? Nitya, how it gets damaged? Pancreatic tissue by uh, what? Sir, it. Uh, sir, it is auto digestion. Basically, the okay, uh, enzymes. Yeah, the enzymes which are secreted from the pancreas itself, they are yes. going to damage the pancreas. If that is a yes. case, why normally every day pancreas is for all of us is secreting enzymes? Why it is not digesting in everyone? Sir, uh, that's because it, yeah. uh, because it is uh, uh, in a pro form, like uh, pre uh, the uh, inactivated form of that enzyme. Very good. There. Very good. What is that which makes those enzymes activated? Uh, uh, Amylase. Uh, uh, I mean. Uh, pan, uh, 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 trypsinogen to trypsin pancreatic. Uh, no, what uh, is that which, which makes all activation of those proenzymes or precursors? What is that which makes let them get activated and they start digesting its own tissue? Uh, okay, um, fine. Uh, 
ప్రవిశంకర్ మై వీడియో ఇస్ సీన్ మై వీడియో సార్ ఎస్ సార్ యువర్ ఏబుల్ టు సీ మై ఫింగర్స్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ రవిశంకర్ డిస్క్రైబ్ కామన్ ఛానల్ లో ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ దిస్ ఇస్ దాంక్రటిక్ డాక్ట్ దిస్ ఇస్ దిబిడి దే జాయిన్ హియర్ లైక్ దిస్ యాంపులైజ్ డిస్టర్ టు దాట్ దిస్ ఆర్ ద టూ డక్స్ విచ్ హావ్ జాయిన్ అండ్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద ఓపెనింగ్ టుగెదర్ అండ్ దెన్ ద యాంపులైజ్ హియర్ సో దిస్ బికమ్స్ ద కామన్ ఛానల్ దేర్ ఆర్ త్రీ వెరైటీస్ ఆఫ్ ప్యాంక్రటిక్ డక్ట్ విచ్ ఓపెన్స్ ఇన్ టు ద డే టూ వన్ ఈస్ ద కామ్యస్ట్ ఈస్ బీంగ్ దిస్ where the both the duct join there is a distance and the ampulla is formed and it gets secreted second both the ducts they go together till the ampullary point at the ampulla they open together third variety they open separately pancreatic duct and the biliary duct open separately into the ampulla into the duodenum okay these are the three varieties of junction of pancreatic and lower cbd anatomically the person who has this variety that is a common channel where he has a common channel in this anatomy they are the likely people what happens this stone biliary stone it comes out of the cbd goes through the common channel gets impacted at the ampulla ampulla so once this gets impacted the whatever the bile is coming towards the gravity lower down instead of going into the duodenum it gets refluxed there is a reflux of bile into the pancreatic duct remember pancreatic enzymes get activated when they are in the alkaline medium otherwise they are inactive so bile is a alkaline medium that's why all the pancreatic enzymes get activated in the duodenum normally to all of us so in this scenario when the bile comes here gets refluxed into the pancreatic duct the enzymes which are there in the pancreatic duct they get activated and they start fighting and i tell my students pancreatic juice or the enzymes they digest anything and everything which comes in contact with so this is the activation they need a alkaline medium am i right yes, uh, ravishankar yes sir yes sir absolutely okay 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 continue ah sir for the the patient was then planned for uh... Diagnostic cholecystectomy. Actually, we planned stem cholecystectomy. We didn't plan diagnostic laparoscopy. Yes, sir said we knew what we were going to do. Okay. Don't use that word at all for a biliary. <laughs> Don't use. Use. Remember logically for students. When you talk about diagnostic, just remember two diseases. Remaining, don't use anywhere. One is tuberculosis. Second is metastatic disease of cancer yeah. in the abdomen. Just remember, there are plenty of other indications. but remember only these two when you use that word ha ah. so intraoperatively there was 10 thick uh, walled uh, gall bladder stump with multiple calculi which were seen and uh, there were dense adhesion between the gall bladder and the duodenum and uh, the gall bladder and the liver bed just a minute i think uh, who who assisted me for this uh sir me and ainas both of us ha so uh, you describe the operative findings did we actually think that the gall bladder was rem- i don't know what uh, uh, partial cholecystectomy that done i think there was an entire gall bladder there correct yes sir yes sir it was uh, it doesn't look like a stump it was uh, almost uh, yes, like 3/4 of bladder. the gall bladder yes sir more than 3/4 but yes. i think it was, it was initially adherent to the duodenum to the bile duct and a lot of uh, omental additions so we couldn't see the gall bladder at all after dissecting we were able to demonstrate that actually we tried the endocyanin green but for, unfortunately it didn't work i don't know why uh, but we were finally able to demonstrate the uh, callous triangle the yes. cbd the cystic duct and we were able to do a cholecystectomy in this patient and it was badly you know it very acute very bad acute cholecystitis and that was definitely one of the causes for his severe pain so if we hadn't done this and sent him home one he may not have recovered and two as niranjan said he would have probably had further attack of pancreatitis which could have been more severe than what it was this time so for those two reasons we did the cholecystectomy and patient recovered and went home so sanya what are the lessons that that you can infer from this particular case 
सर एन यूजुअली वेन वी आर हैविंग डिफिकल्ट कोलेसिस्टेक्टमी एंड इफ यू आर प्लानिंग फॉर अ सब टोटल कोलेसिस्टेक्टमी वेर कटो वी वेर वी आर नॉट एबल टू रिमूव द होल ऑफ द गॉल ब्लैडर बिकॉज ऑफ सम रीजन वी हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट वी रिमूव एटलीस्ट ऑल द स्टोन्स Correct. from the is... the the entire gallbladder often the milk the cystic duct if we are able to find and whatever stones are uh, possible to be removed has to be removed otherwise patient will end up in pancreatitis again okay for pancreatitis there's one merits syndrome yes, some sir. polycystitis all of these are complications so yes, i am surprised i can you know it apparently patient was very unwell and he had empyema gallbladder at that time you know i'm not sure but anyway but at least they should have removed the stone i think they have hardly they have just done i think they have just done a cholecystostomy and come out because i think they have just drained the pus and uh, you know they put a drain and came out i think because i can't see much gallbladder being removed at that time so the lesson is even if you do a subtotal cholecystectomy you try and ensure that you have removed the uh, all the stones second lesson is that if at all especially in younger patients ensure oh. that you fulgurate the mucosa of the residual gall bladder stump because potential for malignancy is there so you should not uh, you know so fulgurate the mucosa so that it is destroyed and it will not cause further problems so those are the two important lessons that you to take home from this uh, patient and you know obviously other thing was that i think we forgot to mention was there was an indentation where the gall bladder stump was atta you know sort of uh, abetting on to the uh, bile duct so potential for merits syndrome was there in this patient at some stage so and he is a diabetic so you know complications could be much more lethal in these people niranjan any other uh, points to add nothing sir nothing nothing everything is covered इंडिकेशनोर्शनिकॉन्ट्रैक्टेड गॉल ब्लडर they are very difficult yeah. uh, very yeah. difficult to get the uh, you know, safety view uh, at the calets yes sir okay 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 thank you i think uh, patient has recovered well and discharged i think so um, i think the you know probably job reasonably well done okay next case yes sir, sir and doubt sir ha ah. sir in this case of uh, subtotal cholecystic it was previously done laparoscopy ah. in this case there will be a distorted anatomy usually so yeah. the preferred method will be laparoscopic uh, uh, cholecystic complete cholecystectomy or open cholecystectomy sir no if it depends on the experience of the surgeon you should not you should have a very low threshold to convert if you are not sure of the anatomy as a sir said if it is a very you know contracted you know very fibrous gall bladder and that can be a very very tricky situation the callo strangle is very difficult to be displayed in that time so have a low threshold as you yourself doing the study now in indocyanin green has come as a good aid for these kind of situations and if it works then it will help us to delineate the callo strangle anatomy see where the cystic duct is see where the cbd is and all the and is there a merits syndrome like picture all of those things will be obvious but the it depends again on the experience of the surgeon you start off laparoscopically but have a low threshold to convert niranjan hello absolutely yes sir i agree so oh. always attempt to do laparoscopy first because the morbidity is far more lesser and sometimes it need not be very difficult also difficult also. and in cases it can be very difficult also so but definitely uh, we, there is a role for attempting laparoscopy first okay okay next case what are the and insights? also in these cases if you have the availability of uh, icg it will be even more uh, advantageous to use icg intraop yes absolutely sir uh, one more doubt sir ha ah. sir uh, 
in uh, biliary thing the uh, the medium alkaline medium is uh, initiator for the pancreatitis sir has said but what about in pancreatic duodenum because there is uh, uh, what i read is when because of smaller duct uh, the fluids are uh, uh, enzymes are accumulating and causing pancreatitis see there is no uh, one i thought uh ravi shankar i thought this boy himself should be able to answer this <laughs> yeah what is what is the reason why people with pancreatic division in a chate they develop pancreatitis it is not because of those alkaline media activated enzymes it is because of the duct anomaly there will not be a complete drainage of pancreatic secretions even though yes, the percentage of secretion is less into the duodenum nicely yes sir you got the point it is a they will have associated duct anomaly in pancreatic division yes sir but activation of enzymes won't be there no? yeah yeah that is because the pressure inside the ductal system becomes high Because exactly said, exactly exactly as sir said the drainage is inadequate and the pressure is high and that will activate the enzymes okay yes it is like calculus pancreatitis chronic calculus pancreatitis correct and the pancreatic division developing acute pancreatitis is not very common pancreatic division presenting as a chronic pancreatitis is more common Okay. Ah, Samir, what are the insights you are going to tell us? No, sir. I wanted uh, all of them. We uh, have discussed all of them, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Move on to the next case. So the second case is a sixty-three-year-old male which uh, who came with complaints of severe right upper abdominal pain since fifteen days. He also uh, came with uh, complaints of dyspnea since one day. Patient when he came, he was tachypneic, tachycardia. Uh, tachycardic not maintaining saturation on room air um, and uh, the pain was intermittent in nature progressively increasing th uh, through the course of time and, um, and it was radiating to the back the patient was a known case of diabetes mellitus and newly diagnosed hypertension under medication he is also a known case of uh, carcinoma prostate with uh, um, six cycles of chemo radiation therapy and um, also he had bony mets Uh, not mentioned. Uh, patient was initially planned for surgery in an outside hospital, but due to the need of ICU management, uh, he was shifted to our hospital. On uh, examination, per abdomen, there was diffuse guarding, which was noted in the right hypochondrium and also over the umbilicus, and uh, there were uh, bowel sounds which were heard. So, uh, patient was walked up, and uh, hemoglobin was eight point four. Uh, total counts were four thousand four hundred. Creatinine was elevated three point six five, and uh, the uh, LFT was within normal limits. Um, went ahead with uh, ultrasound uh, abdomen, and uh, the GV was dis uh, gallbladder was distended with diffuse wall thickening, and there was calcul uh, uh, calculi uh, largest measuring nine mm with pericholecystic fluid, which was noted. So uh, I don't know your presentation uh, as a PG. I expect a little more clinical, uh, nice presentation. You did not mention about obliteration of the liver dullness in acute abdomen. You did not mention. You did not mention. Yeah, you need to mention. And the second, uh, yeah, you said it's a known case of CF prostate. You would have mentioned about parietal examination findings also. Yeah, any findings uh, suggestive of uh, prostatic problem or or pelvic bulge. Uh, and uh, you should have mentioned respiratory system is there any evidence of bilateral pleural effusion okay anyway it's a it's a short case and we have a short time and multiple cases but mm -hmm. it, it has to be mentioned in a single sentence so that you, we will understand that yes you are examining the case and the first investigation what is being done in acute abdomen is a simple plain x ray followed by uac abdomen plain x ray has to be done putting a rise to be in place in acute abdomen in acute abdomen Okay, fine. Yeah, I think you know its points are well made. So, so carry on. Now, okay. uh, Vinod, patient has pain for the last fifteen days, which has increased over the last three four days with fever, severe pain, and uh, clinically he is tender with guarding. So, and uh, ultrasound says wall bladder wall thickened with diffuse wall thickening and pericholecystic fluid. 
So what are you suspecting in this patient? Sir, again, uh, in this also, I'm suspecting two things, sir. One is uh, uh, GB wall uh, distinction and probably perforation. And second is GB wall pancreatitis, which is leading to bowel, uh, uh, again, uh, local guarding. The pancreatitis, all the parameters are normal. The head of the pancreas is normal and the amylase lipase is normal. So what are the possibilities? Something totally different would you consider? Acute cholecystitis is there. And yes, as you said, possible perforation because patient is guarding rigidity and pain has not settled even after 15 days. I think he's had a course of antibiotic also with no, no improvement. Yes. Anybody else think, uh, they think of, sir, as said about perforation, you have to do a plain X-ray of the abdomen or erect chest or erect abdomen. Any other possibilities are you entertaining in this patient? Patient has had chemo radiation. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, obstruction, sir, maybe because of uh, fibrosis and adhesions. Okay, obstruction. But you would be vomiting. Yes. And abdomen will be very distended. Here, abdomen is you know, not very distended. It was... It was uh, soft but very tender in the right, in the mainly in the right uh, upper quadrant, lumbar and uh, umbilical regions with guarding. Abdomen was not distended and his patient was not vomiting. Yes, definitely one of the possibilities is post-chemo radiation, it can be. I think uh, more importantly, you know, you have to think about some form of perforation in this patient because of the fact that he's had chemotherapy. Sometimes Chemotherapy can cause neutropenia. Neutropenic sepsis can cause neutropenic small bowel and large bowel colitis, and that can perforate. So definitely one of the things you have to think of is, his counts are only low, 4,400. So you have to think of neutropenia and neutropenic sepsis in this patient. So I think you should have a lot broader view not just go by what gallbladder mm -hmm. the ultrasound has said. Yes. Anybody has any other thoughts? Uh, Sanya or uh, Nitya? No, sir. What about you, Nikita? Sir, I was just uh, about to say it was a uh, field of perforation, sir. So, Currently, no distension, but it was already mentioned just before. Okay, field of perforation, definitely. Praveen, anything else? Then due to immunocompromised secondary infection, abdominal infections. Possible, yeah. Okay, Praveen, uh, this one, uh, continue. What did we do? So, um... Subsequently, patient was shifted to ICU in view of increased uh, lactate and metabolic acidosis and he was managed in ICU. Uh, hemodialysis cycles were started and was tra patient was then transfused with blood. Uh, further, he was planned for uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Intraoperatively, there were dense additions to the bowel and anterior abdominal wall uh, and gallbladder. And there were distended uh, gallbladder with dense additions to uh, bowel and omentum and diffuse miliary deposits of pus all over the abdomen. So um, once we went inside, there was uh, due to operative difficulty and improper visualization of, uh, of the structures, conversion to open was done and the gallbladder was retrieved and omental uh, specimen was sent for uh, histopathology and uh, TBPCR. Sanya, describe the operation. Uh, so we uh, we went in first with laparoscopic approach. So uh, when we went inside, we saw a lot of dense adhesions between the omentum and bowel. It was plastered to the anterior abdominal wall. So we tried doing a lot of additional lysis. We tried uh, bringing down the bowel as well as the omentum. But uh, there was no space to go into the right hypochondrium and visualize the liver or the gallbladder. Uh, also along with this, we saw a lot of miliary deposits of pus over the anterior abdominal wall and over the omentum. So because we could not visualize the gallbladder, we converted to open. 
and once we went into the open we could uh, visualize the gallbladder but with dense adhesions between the gallbladder bowel omentum and liver uh, we separated the gallbladder and uh, did an open cholecystectomy took a chunk of uh, the omentum with that miliary deposit of pus for biopsy and uh, gave a thorough, uh, kept a drain and we came out sir okay now uh, sanya sanya very rightly asked me a question when we put the laparoscope in i try to go from various directions to see whether we could actually visualize the gallbladder and we could you know even gen additions were very you know the bowel was very thickened and friable so it, i think attempting a additionalization of that bowel would have resulted in multiple perforations so uh, we tried to go from all directions but we were not able to see the gallbladder but we did see this uh, miliary tuber kind of you know pustules and uh, we you know when we pressed on that you pus was oozed out so um, sanya suggested why don't we just take biopsy from there and close the abdomen would any one of you i think that was a very good suggestion would any one of you accept that and you know take that decision you know to just take biopsy from whatever we saw and come out answers nitya would you have done that would you have just take yeah. some uh yes sir considering the miliary spots uh, and the extensive adhesions over there uh, just a biopsy and to wait for the diagnosis of, because of this miliary deposits if it's a tb abdomen then uh, better not to uh, middle extensively so that could have been uh, as a junior most person i would have considered that sir Yes. So also, okay. given the condition of the patient, he was in ICU on inotropic support yeah. and yeah. Uh, in acidosis, severe acidosis. Correct. So, but why I why did I try still open? Anybody we know? Sir, uh, severe pain in the right upper quadrant and uh, and also ultrasound showing a uh, calc uh, cholecystitis. I hope uh, maybe because of that the patient is in severe sepsis probably. Correct. other thing is 15 days the patient has not settled so if if you leave behind either an empyem or a gangrene of the gallbladder patient will never get better and if i had seen the gallbladder and if the gallbladder was not you know gangrenous or not empyem at empyem at gallbladder i would have definitely taken tanya's suggestion and left the gallbladder behind alone and taken biopsies and washed out and came up came up because we could never despite the fact we tried for about 20 minutes or so we were not able to see anything and we can't we can't go go out without knowing the status of the gallbladder because if this patient had an empyema or a, a gangrene of the gallbladder he would never improve till you actually remove it and actually it it happened that it was actually a very nasty gallbladder and that is why we opened and uh, we were able to remove the gallbladder and we got a good biopsy also at that time any niranjan your thoughts would you have just taken biopsies and come out no that's what sir if i had seen the gallbladder intraoperatively i would have definitely considered it if it uh, there was no evidence of any active infection in the area of the gallbladder yeah definitely there was lot of fluid there also pericholecystic fluid was there and uh, patient was not settling for 15 days and the pain increased over the last 3 4 days yes yes so uh, i agree what with whatever you did gurshan the pasar your thoughts yeah uh, i think uh, uh, tubercular uh, tubercles in the peritoneum and uh, pus uh, or a sepsis inside the peritoneum probably we should not be mistaking uh if there is a sepsis inside the abdomen absolutely what you have done is very right you cannot once there is a sepsis it has to be by any means otherwise uh, outcomes are very poor so that uh, is why so yes yeah. i so, wanted one question to the pgs yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, if you are doing a scopy like this what is that which will tell you that yes this is enough don't go continue with a scope take a decision of either opening or closing it out what is that which will which should tell us pieces 
Sanya, you should take that question. You you understood first. You understood. Did you understand the question first? <laughs> so can you repeat it again, sir? So what what so is the when point is that you take a call? When is that you take a call while doing a scopy? That yes, sir, this I should uh, I should so when, this or, and open the case. So when we think go proceeding with laparoscopy will cause more harm than any advantage over this. For example, in this case, if we had proceeded with uh, laparoscopy during the additionalysis, there were chances that we would cause multiple bowel perforation because it was dense. That is your opinion. There is your opinion. And the other surgeon will say, even if I do it like this for another three hours, I will definitely not injure the intestine. So should he continue? If that is the intent of uh, the one more surgeon. Uh, no, sir. In this case, with patient being very so, what is uh, that? What is unstable? in the literature? What is that in the literature? What is mentioned in the laparoscopy? That yes, this is the time one should not. Okay, if there is no progress for one hour of our 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 procedure pertaining to whatever the surgery we are doing, more so with a gallbladder, if there is no progress, maximum of one hour. That is the time we should say goodbye and plan something different. Okay, keep this in mind. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, fine. Okay, right. So, uh, carry on now, Samir. Yes, sir. Post operatively, on uh, biopsy of the omental specimen and uh, gallbladder, there were clusters of uh, acid fast bacilli which were found, and uh, the TBPCR tested positive. As of now, the patient is still intubated on SIMB mode at 60% FiO2. He is not tolerating a CPAP mode. Um, in the ICU, the no management of NORAD is uh, going on. Uh, NORAD learning according to the uh, uh, blood pressure of the patient. Seven cycles of hemodialysis as of now has been completed. Patient has been transfused with five points of uh, five pins of PRBC, two SDPs, and two FFPs. ATT has been withheld owing to the immunocompromised status until he recovers. He is tolerating enteral feeds and uh, uh, in view of prolonged intubation, tracheostomy has been planned. Okay. Is he stable hemodynamically? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but he's on Without hemodynamic. inotropes? Without inotropes? So only for dialysis they were using inotropes. Uh, huh. Otherwise, he generally is off inotropes. No, but uh, sir, I didn't understand that line. ATT has been withheld owing to the immunocompromised status until he recovers. What does that mean? Because uh, there can be superadded tuberculosis. It might not be allowing him to come out of the ventilator. Yeah. So that is what I have told them. That now I even uh, Dr. Jay Prakash was on leave for four days. So I asked Pratyush whether we should give. But the problem is because his creatinine is very high. We couldn't consider giving streptomycin. But now that oh, regular are ATT, what about regular ATT? Yeah, yeah, we are we are giving enteral feeding. So I've asked them why can't we start INH rifampicin and uh, you know ethambutol through the enteral feeding route so that they have to take a call because so it have, is such extensive miliary tuberculosis. Correct, so that correct. might help. That is exactly exactly. I think you know Sanya did I say the same thing? Is the tuberculosis preventing him from recovering? Yes, sir. yes, exactly. Yeah. That is what we were discussing. Sir. Yeah, exactly. What my thoughts were correct, Niranjan. I have asked them to because patient is yes, under sir, yes, sir. He's under yeah, 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 I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah. So we have Stania. asked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why is that I am asking is the patient is hemodynamically stable without inotropes in this case after knowing all this? What can affect uh, what can affect the she will answer Ravi Shankar if you ask like that she will answer. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that I want to know uh, patient's hemodynamical status? Anybody with a raised cre raised creatinine level? Sepsis has been completely is it the sepsis we are thinking in terms so to, of uh, because no, the HPR but... you got no after this slide I am asking think... this question. After this slide, I am asking this question. Drug toxicity, sir. Huh? Drugs toxicity. Which what drugs? drugs? Sir, no because drug of... 
is not on any drugs that can cause that kind of toxicity. No, no, you, after this slide I said, no, after this, what is the HPR you got? No, why? So in indirectly, sir is asking if it was due to that HP cause, what would have happened? If it was due to sepsis, what would have happened? That is what sir it wants you to people to think. Continue to be on Norad, sir. No, after HPR, I am talking about HPR. What is the HPR you got? Histopathology report. So they, uh, they, they said the gallbladder also had clusters. No, forget of about AFB. gallbladder, vomital and other things. Same, the same things are clusters of AFB everywhere. Tuberculosis. Okay. Yes, sir. TB. Now come back to hemodynamical status and tuberculosis. I think he can't give you any more clues. It is obvious. <laughs> and over that, now I insist Ravi Shankar, maybe by telephonically tomorrow or in the night, that uh, Ravi Shankar, you would have added a one more drug like this if the patient would have been hemodynamically unstable. Same patient. And he would have accepted that drug. Without any questioning. Answer Are you up? Bleeding. What is that miliary no. tuber? Extensive tuberculosis causes what? If the patient is hemodynamically unstable, means which is the organ involved? Adrenals. Other than cardia. Adrenals, Waterhouse Fredrickson yeah. syndrome. Yes. They will have a bilateral adrenal failure in tuberculosis. And a drug of choice in that hemodynamic unstable scenario is steroids. steroids. We have to give a hydrocortisone in the beginning, followed by the long-acting steroids. Has to be added along with AKT. Please remember, otherwise steroids are contraindicated in tuberculosis. We don't give because there is an immunocompromised status in tuberculosis. So the only indication where you give steroid along with the AKT is adrenal pain. Because no other drug will help to get the blood pressure up. Okay? okay. Fine. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So I think uh, as of now, from our surgery point of view, he's fine. His abdomen is soft. He's tolerating enteral feed. He's passing motions. So the abdomen is fine. I think it is only the respiratory problem that is, and his renal failure, which has been dealt with with the with re dialysis, so we are ex you know we are now waiting to see whether tracheostomy and then we'll be able to extubate him. So that is where we are. Right. Um. Already ten o'clock, so we probably won't have time to discuss the third case. Um. So final thoughts. Uh. Start with the one of the PGs. Anybody. Um. Let us ask Praveen. He's not talked much. Praveen, final thoughts. Yes, sir. sir it was an extensive discussion, sir. What, what to do, you, what not to do. What did you learn? I think uh, you learned a lot of Professor Gurushantapa's, you know, pointers. Lot of good pointers he has given you, both yes, clinically and investigation and treatment wise. So Always remember, I think for you know it's always good to have Professor Gurshantapa. He'll always give you practical points for both clinical examination, examination point of view, and in terms of management. Yes. And uh, Ravi Shankar, I expected because they knew that the presentation is the gallbladder diseases. Yeah. So I, I expected they will mention the grading system. One is uh, the adhesion grading system, that is a Nizar's grading system. Yeah. Second is the, the the Atlanta grading system for acute polycystitis. Uh, oh, Tokyo, okay. sorry, Tokyo guidelines. Tokyo guidelines for uh, grading of acute polycystitis. So I think uh, that is the homework for you guys. Okay, both of uh, all of you post it in the class. Niranjan, Tokyo guidelines. Class. Sir, it, it was in the, both were interesting cases and nice discussion, sir. And well managed. Thank you. Good Shantapa, sir. Yeah, yeah, really good cases. Well managed, Ravi Shankar. And, uh, and uh, please remember, he has taken a call of opening. Uh, that should be appreciated. Even though HPR is tuberculosis, don't worry, because the sepsis was from the from the gallbladder area. And he should recover. He should recover. Well managed cases and nice cases. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night. Thank you.